हेलो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू एस्पायर 32 एंड दिस इज योर फ्रेंड डॉक्टर सुरेश एनवी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन अ वेरी सिंपलीफाइड वे एंड दैट इज जिप्सम प्रोडक्ट आई नो ऑल ऑफ यू आर कंफ्यूज बिटवीन दैट डाईहाइड्रेट हेमीहाइड्रेट डेंटल प्लास्टर डेंटल स्टोन एंड सिंस दिस टॉपिक इज वेरी कॉमनली आस्ट इन एग्जाम्स एंड इनफैक्ट वेरियस एंट्रेंस एग्जाम्स लेट अस फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड अ वेरी सिंपल फैक्ट अबाउट the gypsum or the gypsum products all of these products have a very important component named calcium sulfate and then if you want to know what is gypsum basically gypsum is a mineral which is yellowish in color and it is present in many countries and this gypsum is basically is in a dihydrate form so this is calcium sulfate dihydrate which was first discovered in paris and in paris they used to burn this in order to remove the water contained partially from calcium sulfate dihydrate in order to get a product called as calcium sulfate hemihydrate and this was termed commonly known as plaster of paris which you all must have heard before joining dentistry but in dentistry the modified form of this calcium sulfate hemihydrate is used and we call it as gypsum product and there are different types of gypsum products namely dental plaster dental stone dental stone high strength and dental stone high strength high expansion but all of these are made up of the similar mineral composition that is calcium sulfate hemihydrate so let us first understand in a very simple way how are the these gypsum products manufactured for dentistry and it is pretty much simple for example you take the gypsum that is the mineral which is made up of calcium sulfate dihydrate and you heat it in order to dehydrate it partially and you end up getting calcium sulfate hemihydrate the point to remember here is that it is just partial dehydration but depending on how you heat it you may end up getting different type of gypsum products as i mentioned earlier for example if you heat the original gypsum in a open kettle and partially dehydrate it at 120 degree to 140 degree celsius we get beta calcium sulfate hemihydrate and this is commonly marketed as dental plaster now if you look at the scm picture of beta hemihydrate you will see that the particles are very irregular and they are spongy in structure now you have to remember this point and i will explain you why because this often comes in the exam if you heat the same gypsum under pressure with water vapor you end up getting something called as alpha calcium sulfate hemihydrate and this is also called as hydrocal which is very commonly marketed as the dental stone and this is the picture of the alpha hemihydrate and as you can see they are prismatic smaller than the beta hemihydrate crystals and they are regular and they are less spongy than the crystals of the beta hemihydrate in the third process if you heat the original gypsum that is calcium sulfate dihydrate under pressure in boiling water with 30% calcium chloride we get something called as densite which is also alpha hemihydrate but this two products are available as a type 4 or type 5 dental stone that is dental stone high strength or high strength high expansion and out of all the varieties of gypsum product these are the densest and the smoothest type of crystals which are available in the market now please note that whether it is alpha or whether it is beta form of the calcium sulfate hemihydrate there is no mineralogical difference and i am sure that you understood this because all these gypsum products like dental stone dental plaster or the other forms of dental stone all of these have calcium sulfate hemihydrate but there is definitely some difference in its clinical performance and we'll try to understand it based on how the chemical reaction happens so you have a partially dehydrated gypsum product and now you are adding the water back to the dental plaster or stone and this will convert this partially dehydrated hemihydrate 
to a dihydrate product and that is how you get the cast from the powder but there is very one important point which you have to remember here that is how much amount of water is needed for mixing of these different gypsum products because this decides the final strength of the product and that's why you have so many types of gypsum products namely as plaster to dental stone and we'll try to understand it in a very simple way for example if you want to mix 100 grams of model plaster that is very similar to plaster of paris you ideally require 18.6 ml of water and this 18.6 ml of water is called as water of crystallization so this is the water which is required for rehydration of the gypsum product and to convert it to a calcium sulfate dihydrate. But clinically that is very difficult to manipulate because the mix becomes too thick and if you pour it in the impression you will not be able to flow it and get the minute details in the impression because since our work is done in a such detail and the margins of the preparations are very small, we want better flow too. So in order to get better flow, we add more water than the water of crystallization that is approximately 45 ml. So you remove the 18.6 ml from the water what you actually put to the mixing of dental plaster, you get 26.4 ml which is actually excess water which remains in the set mass without taking part in the chemical reaction. So this 26.4 ml is remaining in the dental plaster and that's because the dental plaster crystals as I shown you in the earlier images are porous and irregular and this Excess water leads to reduced strength of dental plaster compared to other forms of the gypsum product which you can see in this image. For example, in the dental stone, this excess water per 100 gram is just 9 to 13 ml whereas high strength that is type 4, type 5 it will have just 0 to 5 ml per 100 gram of the powder. That means that to get the same consistency of the mix, you have to use lesser water for the higher versions of the gypsum that is the dental stone or high strength compared to the model plaster where you require more water for mixing. That's why you always use dental stone or high strength stones to pour the cast to make dyes and for diagnostic cast or if you want to make base of the models only then you use the model plaster. Now let's try to understand what happens at a molecular level and this is explained by many theories for example crystalline theory, gel theory and the theory of hydration but out of all these it is the crystalline theory which is accepted more than any other theories. As per the crystalline theory your gypsum product before mixing has two centers in it. The first being the dissolution center and the second being the precipitation center. The dissolution center is made up of calcium sulfate hemihydrate and whereas the precipitation center is made up of calcium sulfate dihydrate. Now you may wonder how would a dental plaster have calcium sulfate dihydrate before it is being mixed. That's because even after manufacturing some amount of dihydrate form still remains in the gypsum product. Now when you mix water with the dental plaster or any gypsum product there would be transfer of calcium sulfate from the higher concentrated area that is the dissolution center to the lower concentration area that is precipitation center and that's how the calcium sulfate dihydrates get precipitated making a set mass. This reaction can be altered by many factors. For example, you can add accelerator or retarder to the gypsum product during manufacturing process. Accelerators make the plaster or stone set faster meaning they reduce the setting time whereas if you add the retarder 
it will make the mix set slower hence increasing the setting time there are many accelerators for example potassium sulfate sodium chloride till 2% or borax or you can also use the terra alba which is basically small amount of set calcium sulfate dihydrate that is gypsum grounded and mixed in the model plaster so these act like the nuclei for crystallization you can also add retarders like sodium chloride more than 2% or sodium citrate or borax these things will cover the precipitation center hence reducing the rate of reaction even increasing the spatulation has a similar accelerating effect because to a certain extent it will break the nucleation site and those small pieces will further act as additional nucleation site increasing the setting reaction rate the temperature also has a very important effect on the setting reaction at one side it will reduce the precipitation of calcium sulfate dihydrate but on the other side it also increases the movement of ions from the calcium sulfate hemihydrate side to a calcium sulfate dihydrate side so till 37 degree celsius the effect of ions dominate but after 37 degree celsius the rate of reaction will slow down because the effect on precipitation will be more now let's also talk about a very important property which is asked often in the exam and that is about the setting expansion or contraction of the gypsum product ideally the volume of calcium sulfate dihydrate is 7% less than the sum of the volumes of calcium sulfate hemihydrate in simple terms the final cast should be 7% smaller than the initial mix but that doesn't happen in practice you actually see 0.2 to 0.4% expansion of the cast now it is important to understand why this happens if you see at a molecular level the calcium sulfate dihydrate precipitate and grow as a crystal and when the growth of the crystal is happening they put outward pressure so this in spite being of a lesser volume but because of the outward pressure ultimately reflects as a linear expansion and this type of expansion is pronounced more if you allow the material to set under water and that's because in the presence of water the crystals move apart and grow more in turn leading to increase expansion these type of expansion are called as hygroscopic expansion which is very commonly asked in the exam now let's learn about the manipulation always dispense the water first in the rubber bowl before putting the powder and once you add the powder allow it to settle for 30 seconds and then you use a stiff metal spatula to mix the powder with the water and you should at least spatulate it for 1 minute with 2 revolutions per second while pouring the impression with the gypsum product it is always better to use a vibrator to prevent the air entrapment one should also wait for 45 minutes to 60 minutes before separating the cast from the impression exams do ask about the disinfection of the models and you can do that with 1 is to 10 dilution of sodium hypochlorite for 30 minutes or spray with the ido4 as per the manufacturer's direction so my dear friends that was about gypsum if you want me to make more videos about gypsum products please mention in the comment section do check the playlist on aspire 32 and do not forget to subscribe and check other videos i will see you soon with one more video on aspire 32 bye for now